All right, so in the previous video, we were talking about the gradient vector, right? So all of this here is about the gradient. Um, the, the next sort of derivative operator that we wanted to talk about, and now we're going to bring the vector fields into the picture, is the divergence. So just to remind you, the divergence looks like this. So for, so for a vector field in R2, the divergence of F, which we can think of as this del dot F, is just the X derivative of the X component plus the Y derivative of the y component, right? Um, if you're in R3, we just add one more component, we add one more derivative, right? So this is the R2 picture. We'll talk about, we'll do an example in R3 as well. Sorry, uh, R2. Now, um, while we're at it, why don't we do this, uh, this gradient example here? We didn't actually, actually, we didn't get around to computing the gradient. What is the gradient for this vector field? The gradient for this, or for this function, rather, the gradient for this function is minus 2x and then minus 4y, right? So we could take this as a vector field. We could think of this as our, our p and our q, okay? And we could compute the divergence of this vector field, right? So Let's do that as an example. So if my vector field f as a function of x and y is minus 2xi minus 4yj, then the divergence of f is going to be, and I guess we should say as a function of x and y, It's going to be what? It's going to be y do the, the x derivative of minus 2x plus the y derivative of minus 4y. That's easy enough. Minus 2 minus 4, I get minus 6. Okay, I get a number in this case. Of course, you aren't, you're not always going to get a number. Um, we started with a quadratic function, right? So, and, and notice that what's happening here is, is that if we look at what we did, right, we started with a function. We took the x derivative once to get p. We took the y derivative once to get q. Um, then we took the x derivative again here. We took the y derivative again here, right? So this is just the, what this really is, is what we've really done here in this particular case is we've done d squared f dx squared plus d squared f dy squared, okay? And we got this answer of minus six. Uh, now, one of the things we wanted to hear is this, was, what does that minus six actually mean? What is this divergence telling you? Um, so, so the divergence has something to do with flow. And, and I realize that I, I've gone fairly wrong on this graph, right? Does anyone know what I did wrong? Well, not that you can tell me you're watching a video. Um, these are all backwards. My arrows are all backwards, right? My gradient vectors, right, the two minuses, they're, they're pointing the wrong way. Uh, I'm sure you've all been screaming at your screen since the last video um, that these really should have all been pointing in, right? They should be pointing in. Okay? So I drew them all facing the wrong way. That's all right. Um, so what, what is really going on here? Um, what, this, what it's kind of measuring is it's, it's measuring, if you, think, if you think your vector field is like the velocity vector field for a fluid, um, then, then the divergence is measuring the tendency of that fluid to either kind of expand or contract, right, or compress, right? So if the, if the divergence comes out, so the divergence in general will be a function, okay? And 
At points where that function is positive, that's telling you that your, your fluid, if you like, is, is expanding. And at points where the divergence is negative, your fluid is compressing, right? It's, it's, it's compressing in, right? So if you think in terms of like gases or fluids, you can think of expansion and compression as things that might happen um, to a gas. And you can kind of you can kind of see it here if you drew the if you drew things correctly that you know if you if you think of I don't know like drops of water or something that are flowing that that things are going to kind of move in right here you're following the gradient you're doing this direction of maximum you know so the gradient is giving you this direction of maximum increase right so if you're trying to move in the direction of max increase you know everyone's scrambling to get to the top right everyone's trying to get to the top as fast as possible up the steepest slope and and so everything is moving in towards the center right from any direction everything's moving in doesn't matter where you are things are all, all moving in towards that center and so that's why we're seeing this minus six right this is telling us that everything's trying to move into the middle um, so this is giving this idea right um, one of the one of the terminology that you would use is that if the divergence is identically zero then you're dealing with a vector field that's called uh, incompressible. Let's add that as a note, just over here. So if, if the divergence is zero, identically, so meaning it's zero everywhere, um, then F is called incompressible. Right. And so this is a term coming from fluid mechanics. This idea of incompressibility, it comes from thinking about a fluid, right, as being compressible or not. Uh, so incompressible means that, you know, there's, there's nowhere that, that, you know, if you think of your vector field as like velocity vectors for, for molecules in your fluid, right, there's nowhere where it, everything is kind of coming together and compressing, right. There's also nowhere that it's expanding, um, but we have this language of incompressible. Okay, uh, I should also note that this, um, what you have here, and you're working on this on an assignment, I believe, um, that this divergence of, you know, our vector field was a gradient. So we've done the, the divergence of a gradient. Um, this is also written in this notation, del squared f. This has a name. This is called the Laplacian of a function. Uh, the Laplacian is, is a, it's a partial dif differential operator that shows up in a lot of places. It's a very important um, partial differential operator. Um, if, again, um, it shows up a lot in physics. If you're studying uh, the wave equation, so think about you know, like waves on a string. Um, if you're studying the heat equations, so kind of thermal expansion, uh, the Laplacian shows up there, so the equations that you have to solve um, for, for, for dissipation of heat involves the Laplacian. If you're trying to figure out things, you know, like the sound of a drum, something like that, you're solving equations involving Laplacians. It, you know, the Laplacian shows up all over the place. Um, one of the things that's interesting is there are, there are special types of functions um, known as harmonic functions where this Laplacian vanishes identically, right? Um, so now, and I mean, constant functions, yeah, okay, which is kind of boring. Uh, linear functions, yeah, also kind of boring. But what's interesting is that there are, you know, there are nonlinear functions, uh, complicated, more complicated functions, where you compute the gradient, you get the gradient, and that works out. You do the Laplacian, and the Laplacian is zero. And it's kind of interesting to think about, well, you know, what, what kind of functions do you have where you know, the, the sort of the vector field, the gradient vector field for that function actually produces one of these incompressible vector fields. Um, it's an interesting thing to think about. Um, but these harmonic functions, they're very important in a lot of applications. Um, and they also show up in, in complex analysis as well. Um, they pop up all over the place. They're, they're a super important class of functions, these harmonic functions. Um, so it's something that you might encounter um, in later courses. If you take a course in complex variables, if you take a course in PDEs, you'll probably run into some of these discussions. Um, now, uh, let's end with one more example, and then we're going to move on to curl. Let's, do, let's just do some random uh, example in R3. 
We won't worry too much about what this means. We'll just do an example. So in R3, um, let's take f of x, y, z to be, oh, let's do, you know, x, e to the z, um, x squared, y cubed, and then, I don't know, um, y squared plus x sine z, something like this, right? If I want to compute the divergence, That's going to give me a function. And what is that function? Well, I take the x derivative of the x component, so I get e to the z. I take the y derivative of the y component, so I get 3x squared y squared. And I take the z derivative of the z component. I get x cos z, and I add them up. And I've computed my divergence, right? So notice that the divergence takes a vector field as an input, gives you a function as an output, right? Um, and in R3, you can also, this, this kind of idea of incompressibility is something that come, can come up. Um, and, and so, in some sense, the divergence is it's, it's measuring this tendency for, you know, it's, it's sort of measuring net flow at a point, kind of at any point in space or, or in the plane. How much is flowing in versus how much is flowing out, right? Is there a net difference? And, and if the divergence is non-zero, then there is some sort of net difference, right? Um, so you have kind of things accumulating. Uh, you can make more careful sense of this once you talk about things like surface integrals. You can talk about this in terms of flux um, through a surface. And so this is um, something that we'll return to later on.